light or dark. Nothing and this is going to be another solo flawless prophecy dungeon on a warlock this time without using any pinnacle weapons and we're doing it with the exotic bow trinity ghoul as i recently got the catalyst for this i wanted to test it out and i thought this this activity would be a good place to test out how good it is on i clear while also teaching people how to do the solo flawless on this dungeon for those who haven't got it i'm aware that there's a lot more people got it now since it's been out a while now but there's still some people chasing it uh, so for this first bit, we're on top three dawn blade. We're going for the skip. The first encounter, all it's doing is teaching you the light and dark mechanic. You already know how that mechanic works, and there's no need to do the first encounter. There's no loot from the first encounter. Nothing. Also speeds up the run um, just by a couple of minutes. So that's how you skip that. We're going to be switching to Well of Radiance middle tree so that we can easily one face boss so we're just doing it in one go um, I have like I said no pinnacle weapons on so we're using on this the void sword fallen guillotine which is farmable by the umbral ingrams it is a god roll it has got whirlwind blade on it um, but whirlwind blade's not required to get a one phase it just helps it it just makes it easier then we've also got on trinity girl like I said got it bow. I'm not saying it's the best choice for it but it just I wanted to make a video of surrounding this bow, so um, that's why we've got that on. And we've also got on Malicious Birthright, which is a legendary um, grave launcher. It's basically the same as Mount. Well, it's not the same as Mountain Top. It's not quite as good. Um, but if you're somebody that doesn't have Mountain Top, Lake of Shadows is up this week. I've made videos on how to farm that. Um, and I thought, like, it's a legacy one, but you can still get Malicious Birthright from from that so if you're somebody who wants to get this dungeon done this season full of flaws before it leaves which will be november you got until the november 10th you'll be leaving the game who knows how long it'll be uh leaving the game for might be all of winter i wouldn't be surprised i doubt it's going to be just two weeks it might be all of winter but i don't know 100 percent on that don't quote me on it um so somebody that needs it done you don't want to grind mountaintop, farm Lake of Shadows this week and you can get yourself malicious birthright. All that's required on it is spike nades. That's all that's required. Um, so we went to go for a double dunk, we didn't get it. Your position has to be perfect to get that. Um, I don't end up going for them after this because um, it's not an intended mechanic anyways. The intention when Bungie made it is that you need to get each four individual dunks, not to be getting double dunks. Since what's the point? Why would there be four dunks if there's a mechanic where you can get to? So it's not an intended mechanic, uh, so we're not going to end up using it. So for our raid mods, uh, we have um, high barrier, high invigoration, take and barrier, and take and armor. Take and armor is for heavy ammo. Take and barrier for the 20% reduction from adds. High barrier stacks with take and barrier. I don't, I don't know the exact percentage, but it stacks on top. Because these Taken Knights are classed as Taken and Hive together. So they stack together. Hive Invigoration works on Hive Knights, which that's what we're concerned with. You can use Taken Invigoration alternatively, and that will work. Um, but I just had a Hive piece on, so we're using that. We basically had a Grey Launcher set up on. So a lot of Grey Launcher ammo finders. Reloaders, um, scavengers, special armor scavengers, things like that. So our build's not too special. I didn't utilize a charge of light build, which will explain why I didn't do that when we get to the final boss. Um, but other than that, we had Verity's Bone, the exotic element. This just basically um, boosts your grenade damage on energy weapon kills. If Trinity Girl was I would have liked to have used Nezrik symbol not so we ended up using like say um, Verity's but it does a lot of different things um, so I could have done without it but it was just an exotic I just wanted an exotic on to synergize with Trinity Girl and that seemed to be the best pick like I said it's not essential to have that on the, the most important thing with this first boss fight is just to manage manage knights and adds and the boss so always be aware the boss is going to be pushing you he's not that threatening but he can't boop you 
the more aggressive you play, the more likely knights are to be enraged. If a knight is enraged, uh, they will just, you know, uh, keep chasing you. So you just need to come, keep running around the map until they stop that. Right now we're baiting the boss, we're getting our last dunk. What I mean by baiting the boss is getting the boss to a position be below the dunk so that we can well right on top of his head. So that there's no risk of him running out of our well. If you do well like two meters in front of him, the boss is just going to back up. And he's not going to go any well and your one phase is over at that point. But by welling directly on top of him, the boss is then inclined to stomp. Not stomp, but melee you. Because he doesn't actually have a stomp mechanic to melee you. Meaning that he's going to stun in you well constantly. And you can easily sort him. Also, well already in spy passes <clears throat> the goblins' immunity, shield, uh, immune tethers that they do. So, it's the easiest class to do it on, for sure. Now we're going to swap our weapons. We're going to put a sniper on. Um, no need for the grey launcher on this next bit. And not only that, we'll swap them because we're going to end up using the sniper at the cube room as well. We keep the sword on, because the sword is pretty useful at times if there's a lot of ads pushing us. Um, we're going to keep the bow on. We keep the bow on for the whole run, never change off it. Because the whole idea of the video is surrounding the bow, so. But with the wasteland area, there's not much to it. Um, if you already know the wasteland area, just skip ahead to the video to the cube room or whatever part you need. I don't expect people to be watching the full run, just watch the parts that help you in it. Okay, I'm not too bothered about how much like watch time or nothing like that, just watch whatever part you need help on. If it's a full thing, then watch the full thing. If not, if it's just the farm boss, watch the farm boss. A tip with the um, wasteland areas that you can step on top of the blights, you are not completely safe. Don't believe what people say, you can still get killed on top of these blights. Depending on what adds are you are up against, but generally you are safe-ish. A kinetic shotgun would have worked well here. Uh, looking, I probably should have put a kinetic shotgun on, but the sniper does the job as well. Um, but you can, like I say, take the uh, blades from up here. I guess, I guess you can see I'm getting hit there as well. Taking knights are dangerous, the ones that do their, their like wall attack that can hit you, things like that. So. Like I said, you're not completely safe. You can do healing rifts on here. Well, uh, you can do it well. You are cons you are definitely safe. You do it well on top of a blade. But before you take the blades, you want to be taking the free snipers that spawn in. Uh, as when you're traveling between blade to blade, you may be weak. Like right now, my recovery is not the best. So if I was to leave the snipers up, I could have got double sniped and then the room would be over on a easy encounter. This is the easiest encounter of the whole thing probably. Well, maybe the jump puzzle, but it's one of the easiest. You shouldn't be wiping. If you're wiping at the wasteland, you're doing something wrong. Um, having said that, we're playing it risky by not clearing any of the ads, or not many. Um, but it's safe-ish providing, like I said, you take out the snipers. Right here was pretty dangerous mistake I made here. Not so much as a mistake, but what I should have done is took out the snipers first. Generally, pretty girl, as long as you get a good crit, like a critical hit, um, you will one shot the snipers. So, with Trinity Girl, when you get the cart list, which if you're going to do it with Trinity Girl, definitely get the cart list because without the cart list, it's just not going to be much viable really. Uh, or it's going to be a lot harder to use because you'll need to get precision hits rather than with the cart list. You can get a body shot and it, the uh, lightning rod perk will proc on all the ads. All you need to do with the lightning rod is get one kill and then the rest of your kills will then be... Um, uh, chain damage like wrist runner so to speak at times as well this video will skip it's a ps4 pro for, uh, ps4 pro problem it's a very common problem you just need to look it up online if you don't believe me uh, as I have had people mention oh well video footage looks weird yeah it will do because ps4 pro it skips um, 
It's also a thing where if your storage is full on your console, which mine's full, but I have a lot of stuff I need. Um, um, hopefully it won't be an issue with PS5. I, I very much doubt it. But that's why you'll see occasional skips in the footage. So we're on the last set of blades. Um, like I said, there's not much to this cover. You can also get an empowered buff on the blights, which if you've got your melee, you may as well. Just takes the blights down a little quicker. For the cube room, we'll be switching off well. We won't be using well as it's not viable. Not as viable. It is viable. There's ways and means. But devours better. I did test the strategy with views and well the Radiance Phoenix Protocol and using a well directly in the middle like for each cube room using a well which you can the problem with it is the design of each room is different and some of the ads will actually hide if they hide and you pop the well in the middle um, it just defeats the sort of thing that means you've got to push outside of your well to get kills therefore not maximizing your super energy so basically you need to be mobile so the well just isn't as good as devour devour you can be mobile get kills anywhere in the room get your health back so it's still the best class to do it on this is our last final blight and a well it So we're going to be switching off this class anyways. <clears throat> and once we're done with that, we'll go for the um, orb, the Toland orb. The orb will tell you which... Um, it's important to sort of look. I would look because you'd be spiraling around for a while if you don't know which exit is. It's not too hard. Because uh, there'll be a pink... The, the door will open and there'll be like a pink light showing you the way so if you can look at which way Tolan went that way you can see where the exit is be careful of the um, invisible minotaurs if they stomp you while you're on a sparrow they could blow your sparrow up and wipe you so they, they are a threat so be aware of that so now we're at the cube room we're gonna like I said switch off well I'm going to put on Void Walker, Bottom Tree Devour, not Top. And then we're going to switch off the Swords. Swords, swords in this room aren't the best because um, you sometimes are required to take a Knight from range because of the light dark mechanic. So a sword's not the, the ideal thing. The best thing is probably, well it is, Xenophage, which I've done... Um, runs with Xenophage in the past. Oh, a kinetic snipe will do you good as well. Like, actually, very good for this. We'll proc our devour first. The rhythm to the, the each room, you follow the same pattern. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. You can kill the snipers anytime you want, but that's not what I'm saying. The rhythm is. Each room, you make sure um, you have good enough ammo, goodish ammo, and that you proc devour first, so you need to make sure you have your grenade. You can proc devour via a melee, that's also okay to do. Um, I guess before all that, you want to ch look up, see where the Toland Orb is. That will then determine whether you need light or dark, light or dark modes. Then you proc devour, you clear the adds, with Trinity Girl. There'll be two knights spawning, you ignore the knights. Um, well no, sorry, you clear the acolytes, then you clear out the two um, snipers. Like both of them, they're one shot with long shadow. Um, you do that, then you clear the two knights. You're on a timer, so depending on how quick or slow you are, you might get an additional spawn of acolytes while clearing your knights. If that happens, be wary of what you're doing. If you have to do a reset and you lose moats, so be it. Because it's so flawless. If you're going to wipe because of moats, 
forget the moats and prioritize your life. That's the most important thing. Well, Trinity Girl is going to speed it up. As long as you do the devour each time, you can one shot a pack of acolytes and a, a load of eyes. You one shot. There's a bit of RNG to Trinity Girl, I've so, like, haven't used it. It doesn't always do. Like, it doesn't always one shot everything. But usually, the, ad, the ads will go down in one or two um, bows generally. Put our acolytes down, so, like I said, you can one shot the snipers. The important thing is if you are using a sniper, uh, shoot in between the shots of the goblins and you'll get your crit. Also we can, um, if we're not relying on our grey launch, we can also use uh, long shadow to take out knights, which is actually really effective. If you're ever unsure or you forget which side, which it's easy to do, it all looks the same really. Um, go to cover. Because on this strap we're not taking out the additional snipers. Because when you take the two knights, well, for each knight you take you get a sniper up top. But we don't end up taking those out because uh, if we are weak when we get a dunk, we've got to devour to rely on or even a heal and rift if, if so be it. So, um, don't need to. On other classes, you might be required, but just know that if you once you pick up the five moats, you can't start killing us. You can pick up four moats, take out the two snipers, get your last moat, then do a dunk. Just know that you'll get two knights as well. Any time you get a Nova Bomb as well, the key time to be using it is on the Knights. Just to, like I said, you're on a timer, so you want to be clearing the, the Yads, the Knights, everything in a good manner so that you're not, so that you're beating the next spawn of the Acolytes. Because they are unlimited. They're on a constant phase. Also, you can re-farm up ammo. Obviously, we've got to take an armaments on. Um, we, can, we can use these adds to re-farm up even super if you wanted you could farm a super up right now where I'm at I could re-farm a super up and then I've got a super for the next room that's another thing that we can do we also make sure we've got lightning rod propped because um, it just makes it smoother so that we don't have to re -prop. we don't have to get a kill which is two arrows generally to an acolyte before we can get lightning rod so we've already got lightning rod proc from a previous room then we're that's another thing we're optimizing and making things it's all the small details we've also got taken spec as well in the sniper that ensures the one shot i don't know if it's still one shot without in testing but if it does then you can put them back up mag instead so we'd take an invigoration Every time we pop a heal and rift, which is the best time to do it when you fight knights, we're going to get your heal and rift back. So that's a mechanic I use, or the raid mod I use. Uh, I use it often at the boss. Comes in really good. I like really super helpful. If you're somebody that has maybe all the barrier mods. And you maybe even have taken invigoration, but you don't have taken armament, which is the big one, because it's ammo. Then you can alternatively use heavy ammo finisher from the artifact, which requires seven energy, so you can't put on oppressive darkness. But yeah, you would lose damage, but you would ensure that you get ammo. So that that would be your next best thing. But if you don't have any barrier mods, nothing, this is still possible. Um, but that's. That, that's more of a challenge run. Uh, if you're doing this without raid mods, then you're probably somebody who's doing a challenge run on it to get it done without raid mods. If you don't have the raid mods, you're new to this dungeon, you want to be um, either going on a hunter bottom tree, because there's safety there. Like, that's ultimate safety. Um, or you just want to be doing your, your last wish chests on all three characters every week. It can be done solo. 
it's on YouTube, so it's there. The hive mods can be uh, available from Menagerie. They are rare in normal. They're more common, I believe, in heroic. Um, that there's no matchmaker for that. But um, these LFG sites, you just post up on the, I mean, on the um, mobile phone app. It's probably the best LFG site I've ever saw for like speed of getting a team. So if you just put on there, post up on there, Heroic Menagerie, I was doing it when I was farming Throne Cleaver last season. I'd farmed it like 50 times or something, something absurd, but I was getting teams in easy. Just put it in, put it up on there. People are wanting to do things like loom in a catalyst, um, where they use roars and stuff like that. So there's still, still people wanting to do Heroic Menageries. So, uh, you know, um, that's where you can get all your raid mods. Now we're on the final room, I believe. And we didn't have a super for it, but we can use a oppressive darkness nade. Use some grey launcher shots, usually takes them out. Gonna do a healing rift for the second. Like, so none of the adds are required to be killed. I'm sure people will know. And then we can just use our remaining ammo to take. take the major. Then once we're done with this we're gonna switch off this class, put on top three dawn blade as it's the best class for uh, like jumping puzzles. It's not required, definitely not. <laughs> well you may as well put it on. Makes things a little quicker and stuff. I'm also gonna put a sword on. We're not required to use any heavy ammo on anything really. like this dungeon with a lot of things, that's why it's probably one of the best, it is the best dungeon made. Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing things, and even with the jumping puzzle there is. There's different routes, different shortcuts, you can even sparrow fly over there, if you know how to sparrow fly. Um, for sure do it. Uh, I do not know how to sparrow fly, so I'm not going to utilise it. Not only that, um, if you just feel your sparrow fly, um, your spell flying going over to the exit, you're gonna just ruin your solo flawless at that point. So this isn't a video for speed run for sure. If you're speed run get trying to get a time of sub twenty minutes, sub fifteen minutes, or whatever whatever the record is at the minute, and that's fine, you're doing you, this video ain't for you. You don't be watching this. This is for people who haven't got the emblem yet and they're still trying to get it. So they're probably the safest way in um, two ways I would say, just either sparrow all the way around, taking out snipers at certain points because they c there is a chance, it's a low chance, but they can still blow up your sparrow and take you out. If there's a chance of dying, I'm not going to do it. This route here, which I'm well trained on, there's literally nearly, it's almost zero chance of me dying, so I'm going to take that route because somebody learning to do it. If it's, a, if it's a low chance for them, as long as they learn it, um, or just take the jump slow, they'll get it first time, they won't die on this puzzle. You can also utilize a thing called Heat Rising on top tree, so you devour your grenade, like on bottom tree, you devour, but it means that you have an unlimited jump sort of thing. That's something I could have done, but I usually take these, um, Comes here to get to location. There is snipers behind us, but not many. This part is probably the most dangerous when you sparrow if you're sparrowing past. Even if you're running past, very dangerous because there's like four snipers or so. If you're just slowly running past them, they could wipe you as well. Again, chances are low, but I'm just covering the fact that it's a potential wipe at a part where you don't want to be wiping because there's no difficulty to this area. I'm just showing, I'm just basically showing the light, uh, sniper locations here. Plus we've still got a sniper on from the previous encounter so... That's all the snipers took out at this part. We're gonna use um, the shortcut coming up. Uh, if you do use the shortcut that I'm about to use, 
Um, you may miss a chest. Uh, there's a secret chest at the end of this. Um, however, you'll probably be able to make it back to the chest on on, uh, on top tree down blade. You'll still be able to make the jumps. But, um, that won't be aimed. Uh, ma mainly, people won't be bothered about that chest if they're going for solo flowers. As they'll be doing that in their team runs or whatever. So, with this part, this is. I mean, it could be dangerous if you let the phalanx push you, but as long as you're um, time you jump like that and avoiding the phalanx, you should be good. We nearly have a super here, so I was just demonstrating. If you do have a super, just find a super with a little bit here to show that you can use top tree dawn blade to quickly super and gl like glide over to the exit basically so to our left is where people spat up round you can see but rather than do that we just take these stepping stones and we use now super here and then we can just keep um icarus dashing to the exit. We're not actually spamming our Icarus dash because I, I don't know if it was to spam it I might miss so I'll just timing them so I don't run out of super before the end platform. Now we're approaching the final boss. Um, we still have lightning rod up so I killed an ad to make sure I have lightning rod to start just so that I'm, I don't have to refarm that perk up I can keep that perk on going even throughout the boss fight. this part as well when I get to the boss um, I do some video editing and save the previous time to then start recording again so the video footage will skip slightly but the ammo is exactly the same super energy was like a little bit higher so that's all I was doing there with that this is a this was one one whole run for the solo flowers so we're switching up our loadout we put on malicious birthright uh, like we had on originally took off the sword we put on our interference grade launcher which has spike grenade and auto loading if you have one with auto loading that is the best rope to have for this boss fight comes in really really um like really really good so we looked first on what we had uh which we had i think it was two dark one light uh if there is a dark i like to do a devour in the dark on that hill and clear that night i just did uh, if it's light then I cleared out a different night. The one that's usually standing in the light, which makes it, you know, easier that way. So we've got our first um, moat already, as you can see. In combination with a nova bomb, which we can farm a nova bomb back, a nova bomb back up. We're doing a devour nova bomb and a lot of Trinity go shots cleared out all the ads really quick. Probably quicker than uh, recluse. Uh, alternatively, what I could have used in this run was Wrist Runner, but um, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to do a video surrounding this, uh, but I thought this would be a good way of doing that. Now we're farming up a light mode. Since we already got our first dunk, the room becomes progressively easier, so the more dunks you get, Especially when you're on your last dunk, there's a lot of uh, cover in the map. This is one part of the room that can be dangerous because Malicious Birthright would more than likely kill me from the impact damage from it. I was trying to get this ogre in a finishable state. What I could have done was spam maybe two shots of interference, then Malicious Birthright to finish the Ogre, then at that point the Ogre wouldn't have been enraged on me. But the Ogre doesn't always enrage, sometimes the Ogre will back up. But we also sit in a healing rift for that important part, so that when we kill the Ogre we get our healing rift back. Same with the Knights, we're always sitting in a rift to then clear the Knight to then get a rift back. It's the same rhythm every, uh, rhythm every time. 
Okay, so that was the boss. That was the final dunk. Um, we're looking to play the first ogre though, what well, the last ogre, to actually farm up some super energy. Perfect time. We got a Scion wave, which the Scions are on a unlimited timer. The Scions, which I forgot to talk about on the first boss fight, that's not unlimited. That is, um, I think it's like only two waves or something. Two waves for the for like one phase of the thing, of the fight. Whereas this is unlimited. Now, another thing that I didn't do was utilize charge with light mods. Reason being is because on my solo run, on this solo run, it's a four phase. I wish it was a three phase and should have been, but it's a, it's very hard to get a three phase without charge with light mods. It ended up being a four phase, but my reason behind not doing that, the only thing we did swap off was our uh, gauntlets to enhance Grey Launcher. But the reason being is so that the um, for reference, you can see every single room. There's four rooms. So you'll be able to see every single room um, being done. Um, so this is our worst APS phase of the four because we uh, missed my nade, which is entirely on me. That was very bad. That means we missed out on oppressive darkness buff on the boss. Um, well, basically what we're doing now is we're prioritizing the snipers. We're always ahead of the boss, not behind him. There's a lot to explain in one thing, so there'll be, like I said, I'll be explain more on each phase as we go. Like every time I get back to the boss. But the route and is identical every time. Um, but I do end up changing how to do damage on the later fa on the later phases to get more damage out. Now we'll get the two snipers behind us, and then once we've done that, the boss still has three, um, two teleports, and all ads are clear. So now we can completely focus on damage. We'll do another oppressive darkness nade. But th that's when we spam in our. Um, Interference. Plus it has auto loading, so we can use malicious birthright like you what you would with mountaintop um, to then pair that with like you know the interference. So you're getting the anarchy slash mountaintop playstyle uh, in a sense. It's just not as good. But if I was to utilize, like I said, um, a charge with light build plus perfect damage from me, I could get close to half HP done. But like I said, if I would do that, um, the person wouldn't see every single room. And plus that damage should have been more, I got to what, took like 25%-ish. I should have got more like 30, 35. But that's, the, the whole reason is because I missed that nade. That's, that was the mistake. Also, you'll notice that the uh, Trinity Girl bow was one shot on snipers, generally. I think you've got to get a critical hit though, with lightning rod procced. So now this is another room. So this room is um, basically, it's a really big structure, but it's raised in the middle. This room I really like, there's a lot of cover. It's great for light and dark. Um, if you need light motes, a good place is on the structure itself. All that area is light. Also, there's a lot of darkness. So this um, room, a lot of people say, oh, I don't like this room. Like, terrified of it. But this room, in my eyes, one of the easiest ones. Plus, the Scion spawn rate is normal. There's four rooms in total. And three of the rooms have a normal sp spawn rate for Scions. They are unlimited, but they're on a timer. Um, I don't know the time on it, but it's generous and then there's a hell room where there's unlimited sorry uh, a faster spawn rate of sounds like probably double it seems double the rate in is it intentional i'm not 100 percent i didn't watch the um ride along thing where they talk about the dungeon on stream which was like a month ago something like that um so i'm not sure if they discussed about it but that's the room that's going to be um, the hardest one. For whatever reason, I ended up losing a rift at some point, or maybe using it. And so um, that was a mistake I made. Generally, I always have a rift up when I'm facing double knights. We also 
uh, cleared that night in the light rather than the dark. I was in the sort of lighter area. That was the mistake, so I just realised, so I hadn't swapped back to my gauntlets. On my first phase of damage, I'd switched to Void Enhanced Grave Launcher Gauntlets, and I hadn't switched back to my gauntlets, which had Eye Invigoration on. So that's important. If you're going to switch to a Charge with Light build for DPS, make sure you switch back to your Barrier Raid mod build. Always remember to switch back. So like we are in previous rooms, we're always coming to that area to take out the ogre always. We don't want to be leaving a Roman ogre up while while trying to deal with knight scions and the boss shooting from all corners. What's good about Megul is that if scions are surrounding knights, we can hit the knight and the chain damage will we can end up doing damage to a knight while clearing scions. It's very good. I believe if I didn't have high barrier on, um, I thought, like things like trying to tank two knights plus the boss, I mean, there's a chance you could die. If we just take on barriers, sitting in a rift like that, where there's like two knights, maybe even three knights, you, you may die. That's why we've got the additional hive on. You can also have hive taken and fallen on, so you could go for an ultra barrier build. Which would work because you could still put on armaments. But you wouldn't have space for invigoration. So, in my eyes, it wouldn't be as good. It's not required to put that form by on. Um, the Taken and the Hives more than enough. So right now, we're low on ammo. Each damage phase, you want to make sure that you have maximum heavy and around 15 grain launcher shots minimum that's minimum but if you can go in there with max then that's even better you're not going to have chance to spam all your grain launcher shots and your heavy there's just not enough time to do it not on this build but having enough ammo is very important because you want to get enough damage out so we waited for the asylum phase to spawn up as we devour up and then we can get our heavy up and super. I'm not sure how much Verity's bow buffs the grenade by. I'm not. I haven't like tested stuff like that because I just wanted an exotic on to synergize with Trinity. I kept that sign up just to see if he would duplicate. Um, which he wasn't. Sometimes they do, they take a while. Sometimes they do. But this is where I think on the second phase of damage, I change up the way we do damage. So on the first phase, we're doing a oppressive darkness nade and a noble bomb, and then grain launch shots. Rather than doing that, less damage overall. Start off with an oppressive darkness nade with heavy grain launcher shots, and then use a noble bomb later on at a later stage. Like midway through the platform rather than at the start. This is the second phase. This is how you should be doing damage, I believe. We start off with some um, Malicious Birthright, then we jump over the um, Darkness Wall, Oppressive Darkness, then use Malicious Birthright and the Heavy Grenade Launcher together. And then when he does his first teleport, that's when the sniper's spawning. Then we forget about the boss entirely. I mean, you can do a shot or two if you hit it, but not essential to do it. Then we'll get Devour via our melee, because we can't bite our nade off that sniper. Then we'll get these two snipers. And then we're going to stand here while being in a good position for the next wave of science, uh, snipers, but also being able to get some damage in as well. And get this sniper here. Uh, then this is a time, a good time to do another bomb in my eyes. And then when he does his teleport, we're out of there. Because it's like the snipers are the the time the time and he's in sync with when the boss does teleports, which is good. Whenever he's doing a teleport, good time to run anywhere. 
Now we're setting ourselves up for the next wave. We're waiting on our nades, so we're not doing much more... ...so much damage. We're going to save some great launch, heavy grenade launcher shots for our next oppressive nade. In total, you end up doing three oppressive nades over the course of it. We're never reloading our heavy as well because it's auto-loading, like I said. But while we're waiting for that to reload, we can use militias with the enhanced grenade launcher. Which it's doing decent damage, like I said, if I add add with light. If you're somebody that has anarchy but doesn't have mountaintop, then pair militias with it. Um, you just need to get used to how it shoots. It doesn't shoot entirely in a straight line. However, my roll shoots pretty straight because of its velocity. You, you want to spec for velocity. That's another thing with these um, grenade launchers. Another thing would be truth teller. At that point, though, you would have to put on a different um, weapon in your kinetic slot. Something like... Maybe an SMG, a kinetic SMG or something. Even a kinetic bow, but kinetic bow might be a bit slow. I'm only... The thing about Trinity Girl is really good for Agli because it just deals multiple damage. A kinetic bow wouldn't be as good for Agli. Something like a kinetic S SMG with Devour would be good. With Turf Teller. Yeah, so this next room, um, some people say that this room's difficult because there's a lot of light, not much dark. Um, on this build, on this setup, however, it's not too bad. But like with any room, we start with a devour, always, no matter what. If we have to start it via a melee, that's fine, it'll just take two melees on a Scion. It's also a good time to start getting some grenade kills, get our heavy back up. Because we're always going to be out from what we've done with our DPS. Another thing is that I'm always looking what um, what the room has. Sometimes it can be free dark, sometimes it can be free light. Uh, the combination can be anything, but always know what mode you're going for at any given time. Like always, do a healing rift right in the corner. We don't want to do the healing rift any closer because um, that, that's more likely to cause the look at the stomp, pulls out of our reef, stuff like that, we don't want that. That's why we're as far as we as possible. This particular room had two light, one dark, so we're working on the next light. But if you get three dark in this room, it isn't a problem, which you'll see me take the dark modes in a bit. There's not much dark. There's a couple of pillars on the outskirts, uh, and in the middle where the platform is, there's a shadow next to that. That's the one I mainly use. A corners like so, like here. If you're unsure with your ogre whether he's going to enrage or not, you could just spray him down with heavy. But just know that you're going to have to re-farm up a lot of heavy later on, so... Using one or two shots here and there isn't so bad, but using entire Magano Ogre is not efficient. Okay, so we got another sound phase. It's good. Oh, some ammo and stuff. <clears throat> the, the, the biggest thing with this is that we're never really devouring for knights. That's the that's where people, that's where you'll go wrong. Never devour for a knight. Always healing for knights, and you're devouring. So you always have an emergency devour for Scion, stuff like that. If you screw up your rift like I did, or swap to, uh, forget to swap, you may need to devour. If you're gonna die, then devour. Because you can always hide, go uh, somewhere. Especially if you've already got a dunk. Whatever side you've dunked, that, that area is safe. You can hide there for quite a bit and duck. So this area right here is where we can farm up our dark modes. Right in this little corner, we can put a healing rift in there. Or places like where I'm standing here. But getting dark in this room isn't bad. This room, I, I quite like it. It's only the only one room that sometimes I sort of struggle with is the room with the Scion farm rate that's double. Which we end up getting that one last. Like I said, there's four, four rooms in total. 
So we don't need to farm up super. We don't need ammo. We do we do need maybe a special brick. So we're gonna take out this ogre. While we I didn't know where there was special at. The ogre actually dropped us special, so that was good. That's our grain launcher ammo finders working there. Which my very is boys void, so make sure your helmet you've got a void helmet on. It makes a big difference because that also affects your heavy. You get more heavy drops. That heavy drop might only have one or two in it because it's an ammo finder one, but it just helps out. Yes, we start off with a birthright shot, then we'll do our oppressive down as near as usual. When he does his teleport, we turn our attention away and then on to the snipers. The right one first, then the left. Then he'll do a teleport again, we avoid that. It's, it's the same every time, there's no RNG with this boss really. Yeah, de melee devour off that Sion. If you can get one or two shots off, try it. But once he teleports, forget. And just get the snipers. And like like previous, we'll do a nade, Nova. Make sure you get a direct hit as well with that Nova. And then a couple of grenade launch shots. Generally five, because we've got taken spec in on this. See, this grenade launch is an a adaptive frame. It's the same arc type as Wendigo, but he actually does more total damage than Wendigo. Wendigo's burst damage for the six shots, five shots or whatever, is higher than interference if you have explosive light times six. If you do not have explosive light at all, Wendigo is bad. It's rubbish for total damage, like for that damage. The thing with interference is for the whole 20 shots, it's, it's really good damage and it's better than the rapid fire frames. I've actually tested it, like comparing it to the rapid fire frames like Swan the Raven and that. Which, when they changed, they, they changed it at some point where the rapid fire frames was doing more damage than the adaptive. So they changed it, they give more ammo to the rapid fires but reduce their damage. And overall it hurt them, they're just not as good. So now, what's ended up happen happening after that balance change is an adaptive frame always wins, even though they've got more ammo. They always are the better choice, because it's not that much more ammo. Like, it's not a significant amount more. They should maybe buff it maybe more ammo-wise, I don't know. But yeah, the adaptive frames are always the best choice. But if you've got a swarm with it auto-loading, use it. It's still going to do decent damage. It's not terrible. It's still going to be really good, just not as good as Interference. And Interference is well drop. Um, I've got loads of them, they drop quite frequent. But this is the final room, so this is the room where <coughs> it's going to give people the most troubles. Um, just because of the spawn rate. What I can suggest with this room is, obviously you want to know what you're going for. If you have free light, then I'm sorry, your RNG is bad. Because there's not a lot of light. Some rooms don't have any light. Like some sides of the room, sorry, don't have any light or not much light. If you have free dark, then that's the best RNG you probably could have got. It's really good. A lot of dark in this room. What you can do is between sound phases, so always expect that there's going to be another sound phase. Once you've just cleared all the ads, especially when you just got here, prep the knights, so get the knights one shot in between phases so that way after your next scion phase, so say it takes two scion phases in between the first and second scion phase wave, you're prepping knights so that way after the second scion phase wave, which is going to be now for me you're in a good position to quickly take um, your knights At the same time, like I said, Trinity Girl at times, it is a bit of RNG at times, but at times it's really good ad clear, like one of the best in the game. Looking at this as well, Sunshot would have been a good choice. So I could have run Sunshot with Militias and Interference. That loadout would have been very good as well. 
Oh, we got our first dunk. It's critical you get your first dunk. Once you get your first dunk in this room, at that point, you've just made it significantly easier for survivability, because this is our safe haven. I mean, it's not completely safe, but it's our safest part of the map. <clears throat> so now we've got another sound wave, as always. We're devouring up for that. Whilst also prepping knights for the next phase. I think we end up deciding to go for a um, dark one this time. We end up using a Nova here, which they end up being light. So I wasted that there. I thought I was actually in the um, dark area. That was fine though, because um, we actually had a light dunk to do anyways so we actually got the easier sorry the harder dunk out of the way this is that the light the light in this room's the harder dunk so we got a, a harder dunk out of the way but that's actually fine worked out all it means is i'll just have to sort of arm a little bit of super energy but in this room never worry because you can use the additional scion spawns especially at the end when all the rooms clear you need to farm up another server, you can get it in no time because of the scions. Um, because of how many spawn so quickly. That's one thing this room's good for. With malicious birthright as well, I forgot to say, it's a free shot with spike grenade. With no buffs or anything. And mountain tops are two shots. So mountain tops still a better weapon. It still does like a little bit more damage per shot. Let's say it's about 10% more, something like that. Oh, Malicious Birthright, it's next best thing. Kinetic Snipers just aren't good in the game. They're just not good, like, for this boss as well, they're terrible. So, this is literally the next best kinetic weapon you could probably use. You can't obviously use a shotgun, it's just not going to be absurd using a shotgun on the boss. So, this is the next best thing to mount up. Oh, that or Troop Teller. Because that was our final dunk. We're just farming up some super energy. Ammo doesn't... It's not important, it's like you can see. Boss's HP is like 15%, so... We're pretty much good at this point. But like I said, I chose to do this fight... At a longer... Um, get at least four phases so you can see all four rooms um if i'd utilized the charge of light build even though i screwed up on that first phase i still probably would have got three phase because high energy fire stacks with oppressive darkness that's an additional 20 percent so if you you know if you take a 20 percent additional damage on top of my three phases that would equate to a three phase because he's got like 15 percent left now so it would add up Providing you don't miss too many grenade launch shots, I missed quite a lot at times. As always, we'll get the snipers because he's still got quite a bit of health left. So there's, a, there's a possibility I could still get wiped if I don't. If I don't manage the snipers. We're kind of waiting for the um, Nova phase when I get my Nova up to finish it. That's probably one of, another good thing Trinity goes for. It's good for this area for getting the sniper. It's really good for that. So we'll do our Nova oppressive just to finish the fight. But that was the um, Solo Flawless Prophecy Dungeon with Trinity Ghoul and without any pinnacle weapons. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. The Nine have spoken. Their answer is complete. Then we learn nothing. I wouldn't say that. Clearly, the Nine pass no judgment on Dark 